Hello, and welcome to Signal in the Noise, the trader's podcast. Understanding risk, gaining an edge, and trading with the right mindset and tools. A podcast for traders at all stages of success with your host. He spent 10 years as a trader with the last few years in groups of like-minded individuals all hunting for the Signal in the Noise, Luke Backhouse. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Signal the Noise, a trader podcast hosted by me, Luke Backhouse. Today's episode is with Jared Goodwin. Uh, very, very happy to have Jared on today because Jared and I's uh, trading approaches, strategies, theories in the market are actually quite different. And um, that doesn't mean we have to disagree. It just means that we have to view things in a slightly different way. And, and I'm keen to understand Jared's approach. Jared is a systems trader, effectively automating his trading so that he stands... Uh, back away from his trading, um, which is the opposite to my approach, which is very much hands-on, um, commonly called discretionary, because effectively it's ultimately my discretion on what trades I place. Uh, it's a it's a really interesting chat that we get into, Jared and I, and, and we go sort of not too deep into the world of automated trading, but just enough to kind of help explain and, and give a sort of starting point. And, and to help with that, Jared has added a um, very, very useful PDF, which I've actually read myself um, it, before speaking to Jared and since, because automated trading is, to a novice, which I consider myself to be in this case, um, a bit of a, a bit of a minefield for understanding terminology, understanding what works and, and ways to make sure that what you're doing is working and not uh, basically curve fitting, which is something we, we talk about during the course of the episode. Um, also worth noting, uh, about halfway through this episode, Jared and I get cut off. Um, there's a very, very short interlude with a little bit of music that, um, and then we jump straight back in. I haven't bothered to add any more um, of this one-on-one uh, -on -one type of chat uh, that I'm doing now. I've instead just approached it with the idea that um, let's get straight back into chatting with Jared because it's all interesting stuff. Uh, the, the PDF that I mentioned can be found within the show notes. Um, as always, uh, check out the website tradethesignal.com to get any more information or my new Facebook page, Trade the Signal. There's more and more content coming through there. If you want to get in touch with Jared as well, I've included his details within uh, the show notes and on the website and on the, the Facebook page. But um, but yeah, for now, um, settle into uh, to the show with mine and Jared's chat. Um, thank you very much again for listening. Hello, Jared. Uh, welcome to Signaling the Noise. It's fantastic to have you. Um, good to hear from you. Hello, Luke. Thank you very much for inviting me on the podcast. No problem. We've sort of we've sort of spoken a little bit on um, online via Facebook chat and things like that. And I think we probably met each other in a in a Facebook group somewhere. Um, but just sort of um, so we can dive in as quickly as possible, just give us a little quick background on yourself with trading and how it sort of how it all started, I guess. Okay, well, going back probably eleven years now, I guess. Yeah, I think it was around two thousand and eight that I mm -hmm. fell into trading, <laughs> and I actually <laughs> I got into it in a very strange way. I I used to work at a body shop, so I used to paint and repair cars for a living. Okay, yeah. And a guy I worked for, he was, he had a part-time job at British Airways, and he was always buying British Airways shares for some reason, and he uh, introduced me to it, and I was quite fascinated. So before long, um, yeah, I was just amazed by you could one day buy something and then a few days later it can be worth more money it yeah. was um without actually doing anything yeah. it was quite fascinating so that's what really got me into it and so i began buying shares and i had no idea what i was doing so the first thing what you do you, you talk to people um mm -hmm. a friend of a friend yeah i knew he was heavily into buying shares mainly uh talked to him and all i was looking for was tips of what to buy yeah, um, sure. <laughs> i didn't appreciate that i needed to know once i bought them when to sell them yeah. or anything like that <laughs> it was just <laughs> what should i buy now yeah so, um yeah got into buying a few i think my first ever shares in a, in a stock um i think i held it for oh, a matter of days and that was it and, sure. and 
and back then I was actually you you've probably done this yourself um i was actually buying them through i had a a share dealing account uh yeah, yeah. kind of on the back of my bank account yeah and, uh, yeah. yeah it was going through my bank account and <laughs> i think i was paying a flat 15 pound commission in and then 15 pound out yeah. as well as as well as some sort of a tax uh, i believe yeah, yeah, memory. yeah i can remember so, doing a bit of that myself yeah <laughs> yeah, so so yeah, it was heavily shares, and then I got online and started following people online, and yeah. got amongst different groups and forums, and never took too much notice. But yeah. I was buying a lot of books actually from memory back then. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've still got well, I think I've got all my books still, but yeah. occasionally some of them I pick up and reread. But I was reading everything that I could get my hands on, mm. and quite quickly it became apparent that i love technical analysis oh uh, brilliant yeah so fundamental analysis um was completely boring to me yeah. i had no interest in what a company did and and how to predict price movement from their fundamentals yeah. and quite quite often it would be opposite wouldn't it you you'd hear really good news come out and the share price would go down yeah and sure it, it, yeah it was just I don't know. It was a bit mind-boggling for me. And I, yeah, it and didn't resonate, yeah. I had no interest in it. So I found some books on technical analysis. And so I probably spent the next three, four years, perhaps, um, just playing. This is all part-time, by the way. Yeah, um, yeah, of course, yeah. Part-time. As I had a, a full-time job. Yeah. And I never – it's probably something important to say now. I never – actually intended trading to be a full-time venture. I never had the desire to sit at a computer, sit at the charts yeah. um, all day, every day. Never, yeah. never appealed to me. So yeah. I often I found inspiring stories about traders who did it on a part-time basis. Um, so I was, you can imagine, I was trading off of daily charts. Yeah. So looking off daily charts, trying to find these technical setups and probably I'd actually actually rewinding a little bit buying shares kind of 2008 2009 10 I probably did pick up some of the the good ones to pick up but I probably got or I was lucky and Mm. I did make a bit of money yeah Um, but I had no it wasn't off my own back it was off of tips that I'd picked up from websites or friends yeah. it was yeah. none of my own work so sure, yeah. although, I'd, <laughs> although i'd made money it was none of my own work and yeah. i was completely dissatisfied with that yeah i wanted to do it all by myself so yeah, yeah. in the meantime i was doing the technical analysis thing alongside it and yeah that was probably just ever so slightly losing money just sort of going downhill yeah. i was lucky enough to pick up some books early on, um, two two authors spring to mind: Van Tharp yes. and um, Doctor Alexander Elder. Have you? Yeah, heard yeah, of him? yeah, yeah. No, have. I've got I've got books by both. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've actually met him. Uh, I used to be in uh, a, a trading club of his. Yeah, quite an interesting guy. But yeah, yeah. anyway, so from reading these books, it had been instilled in me from the beginning about risk management i never risk more than maybe two yeah, percent per sure. trade and mm-hmm. i i really did uh, from the word go i i abided by those rules yeah. and not being i'm not a gambler anything like that i've never never gambled i'm quite careful with money yeah. although, <laughs> although i'm a trader but, <laughs> but i approach it from a very cautious yeah a cautious mindset so yeah even though i spent years probably not even go inside but it's probably losing a little bit of money yeah um, probably not anything i didn't lose any more than what i'd already made on these these shares by the way but yeah still wasn't there was no consistency or uh, was consistency that i was just losing money yeah so that just still wasn't working and then i remember i took a trip to america i spent about three months traveling around america and I, I can still remember <laughs> remember it today actually i was in a mall in america 
and it was a, a few weeks before I was coming back and I thought you know I've really got to get focused and, and step things up again and get better so I'd previously met my first trading coach I previously met him at a seminar in London right. and I'd got a couple of books by him his name's Malcolm Pryor by the okay. way um, he's an English guy yeah and I sent him an email while I was there in that mall mm. using the Wi-Fi and we arranged to meet up as soon as I was back and we met up and to cut a long story short we had quite a few coaching sessions over yeah. Skype, I think it was back then. Yeah. And that was a real turning point in my trading career. Right. So we're probably f yeah, four or five years into into my trading by then. Yeah. And basically what he what he done it was ever so simple really. He just introduced me to mechanical or rule based strategy trading strategies whilst yeah. i'd spent all these years playing around with technical indicators and different levels and um all that sort of stuff but nothing was i wasn't keeping anything consistent i was yeah. doing the same as what many people do you try something for a matter of weeks or six trades and if it wasn't working then well that obviously doesn't work does it so you'd you'd move to something else mm -hmm. and constantly moving around trying different things not giving anything a long enough chance to work. So yeah. he introduced me to extremely rigid rule-based strategies, which I can't believe I never, I never really came across before that. But again, this was probably this was six years ago. So there's so much more information on the internet nowadays. Yeah, for uh, sure. With Facebook groups and I think discretionary trading books. Or sort of the discretionary end of trading books are are definitely the more popular ones. Or certainly mm. from what I've seen, maybe I'm more attracted to them. I don't know, but yeah, I I know what you're saying for sure. I think you're right. Yeah, I do think you're right. Mm. So he put me. Uh, in fact, the first book that he really recommended to me was a small book uh, called Short Term Trading Strategies That Work. I believe it's called by. Uh, Larry Connors and Cesar Alvarez. Okay. Yeah. And have you heard of that book? I haven't. No. Okay. And I would really, really recommend that. Yeah, I'll look it up. Any yeah. of your, any of your listeners that want to get into mechanical trading. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he he's he outlines about I can't remember maybe eight different strategies, all for trading. I implemented them on the S and P five hundred, but they're for trading stocks, the yeah. S and P or uh, the spy yeah. and so I started looking at those and I was quite impressed I did that <laughs> that's when I started back testing and I was using spreadsheets for back testing yes so obviously look, <laughs> looking looking at charts that. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> looking at charts looking for these signals writing down the numbers and yeah. he actually outlines a strategy that's uh, it's, it really is fantastic it uses RSI and it uses a pretty fast period RSI and when the RSI is really oversold sort of below the 10 level it's a buy for the S&P on the daily chart mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a short term strategy it might last two days it might last 10 at the most sure. and it's if you've studied the S&P 500 you'll realize on the especially on the daily time frame it's extremely mean reverting the yes. minute it gets a little bit oversold, then typically it will revert to the mean and, and, and have a rally for the next few days. Yeah. So good results. But having said that, I was looking at, again, I'm off the top of my head, 15 or 12, 15 trades a year. Sure, um, yeah, yeah. So very low frequency of trades, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> much, much less than I wanted to be trading. Hard to trade that, for sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I was kind of stuck between having to trade on a daily time frame. Uh, I wanted to trade a lot more frequently, but obviously signals don't come up all that much, all that often on a daily time frame. Yeah. So, so uh, 
the next thing to do, obviously, was look for more strategies, uh, mm -hmm. which is still a reflection of what I do today, really, but more daily strategies. And by this time, I'd actually moved away more from stocks now because I'd realized that typically with stocks, no matter how good <laughs> your stock may be, um, <laughs> if the general market moves down, then that stock's going to move with it. They all kind of move together roughly, don't they? Yeah, there's correlation for sure. Yes, exactly. So I thought, well, why am I bothering with all these? Let's trade the big thing, which let's actually trade the index. Mm -hmm. So, and by this time, I think I've moved into using spread betting um, because you could get access to trade the S&P 500 yeah. using spread betting um, with little stakes, which meant you could do accurate position sizing. Yeah. Ultimately, yeah. it was very easy. Have you used spread betting platforms? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for years. Yeah. yeah. yeah I think yeah. I was using. Back then, it was called Capital Spreads. I think the LGC I today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then IG, the yeah. IG index. Yeah, I, do, I still use IG from time to time. Yeah. yeah, and it's really simple, isn't it? So, yes, absolutely. It's the, probably the most user-friendly way, I think. I think so. Of trading yeah. these days, yeah. Yeah, a pound a point. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah it's Very it's simple. just dead, dead simple, yeah. yeah. And I always found them, as a broker, extremely good. I know people have horror stories about yeah, sure, them, but sure. no... I didn't ever have any problems with them. Mm -hmm. So so I'm on the path and I'm looking for more mechanical strategies. So again, reading lots, looking lots of looking at lots of stuff online. Um, I did come across a book again actually that my mentor, uh, my coach Malcolm, he recommended. It was one by a guy called Courtney Smith and Ah uh, yeah, I think I've read it, it's this I think it might be something like how to make a living trade in foreign exchange. It's yeah definitely foreign exchange related. Yeah, it rings a bell with me for sure. Um, and it was that was my first introduction actually to foreign exchange. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, so I've read this book again. Similar book. It adds he outlined maybe ten different strategies. Yep. And there's a whole load of testing going into this. So this is. This is probably another two years of my trading career. This sure. sort of testing, searching, yeah. trading, um, and yeah, I mean we were we, we were moving forward, but yeah. not as fast as I'd like. <laughs> <laughs> so then I actually I don't know how I found him. I found my next. I, I say he's my trading coach. He's not my trading coach because I've only ever took courses. I've never personally interacted with him um yeah. a guy called andrea unger okay um he's a mechanical system trader okay and i took one of his courses and he introduced me to more of these trading systems but how to develop my own basically right Brilliant. which yeah. was kind of the uh, next step i guess it, it was definitely the next step mm. yeah and it was using software i I use the same software today, it's, which is MultiCharts. Okay. And for those of you um, who haven't heard of MultiCharts, you might well have heard of TradeStation. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of TradeStation. Now, MultiCharts, their platform is technically it's very similar to TradeStation. So, so yeah, I'm on this course. I'm learning how to develop um, my own trading strategies, and it was like. I don't know how to describe it. I've suddenly been opened to this world of opportunity because now <laughs> <laughs> there's no Fantastic. time limitations. Yeah. I can trade 24 hours a day. I can trade off minute charts. I can trade off 10 minute charts. Yeah. I can do anything I want because I'm using software. Mm -hmm. So, and I absolutely loved Andrea's material. I think it's fantastic. I, and I often credit him uh, wherever and whenever I can, to be yeah. honest, because I really do credit the man for where I am in my trading career today. Brilliant, yeah. Um, and so this is, we're now probably th either three or four years ago, three years ago, I believe. And since then, um, 
it's just been moving forward all the time. I'm developing my own strategies using a lot of the methods that Andrea has taught me. I've since looked at other people's methods like Kevin Davey. Have you heard of Kevin? The name rings a bell. He's I think another he's one of the market wizards, isn't he? In, um... I don't think he's a market wizard, no, but he's he's done some trading books. Okay, well, I've um, certainly heard the name. Okay, they, they both, both of them, incidentally, uh, both Kevin and Andrea, hmm. they every year they run what used to be, I think, a futures. It was the Robins World Cup Futures Trading Championship. Okay, and it was a championship. I think they include Forex now, but it's a championship where you enter with your own money, you you put 10 grand in and $10,000 and you've got a year. And by the end of the year, whoever's made the most return on their 10,000 wins. Yeah. Um, and both Andrea, Kevin Davey, they both won this championship. Okay. Uh, so that put them mm. in quite good stead when I was researching them. Yeah, for sure. And it was somebody... Um, a guy called Larry Williams. You must have heard of Larry. Yeah, 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 uh, Larry Williams. So, interestingly enough, Andrea Unger, um, he was actually a student of Larry Williams back, oh, okay. back, back in the day. Yeah, and Larry, Larry's actually famous for his uh, time in the the championship. I think back in the eighties, eighty eight or eighty nine, I believe. Yeah. He he turned his 10 grand into i think it was 1.1 million in a year <laughs> i think it was 11 thousand percent brilliant um yeah so it, that's his little yeah bit of bit of fame but but a great trader again for sure he trades or should i say i trade exactly similar to what he does okay um, similar mechanical strategies looking basically what we're doing is we're using past data we're studying uh, price patterns, how the market moves, just looking for any way we can get an edge, really. Yeah. Um, and commonalities, anything that catches your eye, exactly. and then test it, basically. Yeah. And yeah. If anything that's recurring, just mm. looking for recurring patterns. Mm -hmm. And that really takes takes me up to where I am today. I yeah. Probably sh I probably should add that now I've developed these strategies, I can develop these strategies by myself, not only can I develop a rule-based strategy, but I can actually automate it. So yes, good once, point. yeah, finish with that once, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Once I've developed the code, then it's literally a click of the button and the platform. Uploaded. Yeah. If the platform's running, then the, the data's coming into the platform and the platform's looking for your, for your entries and your exits and that'll execute to, to my broker as yeah. and when they come. So uh, yeah. there's no, limitations i can trade 30 40 50 different strategies all different markets there really mm. isn't any limitations which is which is great and yeah. that yeah that that brings us up to where where i'm today luke really fantastic i'm glad we went through the whole thing actually i deliberately kept quiet <laughs> because um, okay. because it was it was interesting and it, I, i'm glad we got the full sort of revolution of processes because actually this is one of the the key reasons that um I was so, you know, so looking forward to getting you on the podcast was if, you know, for anybody that's listened to any previous of my podcast episodes, this is kind of the opposite to a lot of the guests and myself, because I'm a uh, sort of a discretionary based trader. Um, I do have systems and rules, um, mm. but I don't automate my trading and, and my trading is done via my own sort of finite discretion ultimately at the end of the day you know if I don't yeah. feel like trading that day I don't trade um, and you've just outlined a process which you've gone through over the years which is not dissimilar to mine but you've just come to a different type of trading um, mm. that I think is is a great is a great point of conversation because there's nothing wrong or right about anybody's trading system it's just what works for you and exactly. um, yeah. we'll go back if we may to when you were trading so uh, the initial bit everybody to a degree, has that kind of that first bit of um, the kind of conscious and competence, I guess, is probably the easiest way of describing it. The bit where you're just trading, you're trading in some form, but you kind of know that you're nowhere near what trading really is. Um, mm -hmm. You just kind of, you just follow in, you know, like you say, tips, or you're following somebody else's guidance, or you're just kind of hoping for the best. And but the next bit you went through, that process where you kind of grew and developed. 
when you read those first few trading books, when you started to look into things, did you did you get an inkling at any point that that the kind of although you like technical analysis, the structure, you know, the rigidity of these rules was going to be what what drew you towards things, or did you just remember the technical analysis was the bit that that drove you know that direction? Um, like I like I said earlier, I definitely knew. I definitely found a mm. new technical analysis was yeah. where I wanted to be. I wanted, but the, to... the actual rule stuff. Yeah. So the rule stuff didn't really, and I can't believe that I wasn't Just aware of it yeah. until I spoke to Malcolm, my first training yeah. coach, and and as soon as yeah, as soon as he said that, then I knew yeah, this is this is definitely for me because yeah. I believe that it it also eliminates a, a ton of emotion out of your trading yeah. now it doesn't eliminate everything but i think it it definitely for me it well, helps effectively if you're not eliminate. part of it it kind of mm. it takes that out of the equation doesn't it basically it takes the the, the squidgy organic part out of the trip pulling the trigger <laughs> exactly yeah the decision process yeah yeah, yeah. um and i I'm probably not a very decisive person. So, <laughs> although I although I never had problems pulling the trigger when I was trading more discretionary yeah. prior yeah. to this, uh, I never had problems pulling the trigger. But even so, I loved the idea of the rules, and mm. more than anything, with for me, with a rule based, a, a rigid rule based strategy, yeah, um, a huge, huge, huge part of it is being able to back test that strategy. And see yes. how it worked. Yeah. So actually, yeah. So th this is kind of what I was digging digging for, really. I guess was kind of what was the key part, the key component that just suddenly was like not suddenly, but just just overwhelmed you with like this is what suits me as a trader. Because ultimately, you know, we all have to trade the way that we see the markets and what suits mm. us best. And and that's probably it, isn't it? Is the it is, yeah. the ability it's, it's, to back test exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Without a doubt, it's the ability to back test, and then yeah, that gives. That's given me a lot of confidence uh, to trade going forward, using that strategy going forward. I know yeah. um, you can manipulate back tests. Uh, you know, I've done it. I develop strategies all the time, mm -hmm. and something can look great you know, on past data, but it just sometimes it just is a bit of a coincidence, and you've ended yeah. up curve fitting. Um, mm -hmm. But typically, you can't when you find a strategy in a book that the book was probably written three years ago, then you've got all this out of sample or data uh, newer than when the book was actually written mm -hmm. to test. And if if that newer data, that out of sample data, still looks just as good as the prior to when the strategy was thought of or supposedly written about, then, then that's confidence that that strategy works. Yeah. And yeah, so for me, yeah, good yeah point. massive massive uh, plus that it's been able to back test and yeah. see how things work out. So I spent a little bit of time um, sort of dipping my toe, I guess, and, and, mm. and probably that's part of the reason why I didn't necessarily go this way was I was always dipping my toe. I was just kind of testing it, playing around with it because I was still doing my discretionary trading. Um, but I spent a little bit of time doing it, developed a few systems, ran um, you know, MetaTrader, um, mm -hmm. Run a few. Um, I can't remember what the correct terminology was, but effectively automated systems. And um, and not to say you know it did or didn't suit me. I just never took it that seriously. So I understand the process, and and I did. You know, I ran back tests. I, I developed a few within the structure of what I had. So I, I remember having sort of kind of a few rule based. Um, Sort of systems that I could manipulate the you know the length of the MA and uh, excuse yeah. me moving average all that type of stuff. Um, yeah. So I I, I uh, it, it all rings through with me, but I I know I didn't take it that seriously at the time, um, yeah. and not because it necessarily didn't suit me. I just didn't take it seriously. Um, and and one thing, you know, one thing that is for sure is that you kind of I think anybody that's uh, doing well in trading considers themselves a trader at least if not a successful trader um, they have to trade the way that suits them and um, what we've just described is exactly that and, and the back testing is obviously the bit that suits you 
you know suits mm. you best um yeah which is fantastic because it's a key point there for sure so the the again let, let's go through the timeline because i was i had so many questions but i wanted to hear the whole story <laughs> the way through okay <laughs> and so when you moved on and you started back testing and then and then you yeah. started developing your own systems mm. developing your own systems was that just uh, obviously you were on a course so you were being taught it but when you said it opened up a whole new world to you the the i remember that type of thing happening to me a little bit and you just get to this kind of a little bit I remember feeling kind of rabbit in the headlights moment where I just hit a bit of a wall where you kind of suddenly know almost too much to know which direction to go in how did you get over that was that part of the training or did you just did you just sort of feel like things that felt right so what I'm kind of digging into again and hopefully a, <laughs> in an interesting way is 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 those system developments what's what's the process and how did that early start early process start for you okay so I don't think I had the experience that you did you know it wasn't the sort right. of rabbit in the headlights experience yeah, okay. cool. um, how it worked was once I'd gone through the course and I've got okay with the software and started being able to program i uh, initially i tested a lot of the the i was training a few rule based systems prior to uh, going on andrea's course yeah. and so i thought i'd be really good really good to code these strategies and not only actually test them thoroughly because back then it it, it could take me um well, in hours, it, it it could take twenty hours just to just sure. to back test a few years worth of, of data. Yeah, yeah, um, good point. And you know the machine will do it in seconds. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, I was so thrilled to be able to have this coding knowledge and this software at my fingertips. So I I coded the strategies that I had been trading for the past couple of years, and not only did I realise that they weren't actually that good, but they weren't ever going to be because they were going off daily time frames they worked but yeah they were nowhere near as good as what i'd just been shown yeah and so i started looking at those i started getting straight on with from what i'd learned uh, i'd started developing my own strategies and immediate sorry immediately i came up with probably four or five different strategies within I say immediately within a few weeks of development that and those, I was happy with. Those came from previous strategies but sort of modified from what you'd learned on the course or, or they came from what you could see on the charts? Yeah, so these ones were actually uh, what I kind of what I'd learned from on the course. Yeah. They weren't actually the ones that I'd previously been trying yeah, okay. because after testing those ones I thought, oh there's much better stuff than this out there. You know, why am I going to carry on trading those? So you took so, the ideas from the course and started to sort of modify the rules. Exactly. And yeah. Okay. Cool. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, typically throughout the course, um, you know, you, uh, Andre had taught me how to develop and he'd go through the process on, you know, Euro dollar. And so, okay, that's the process on Euro dollar. Let's go away and let's test you know, euro pound or dollar yeah. yen or so yeah, okay. loads loads to get on with loads to yeah, yeah loads yeah. of um tests infinite to do. number so, of, of variables yeah, there isn't there yeah. yeah so so i've got these strategies in place i've got got my software i'd i'd had to get a new broker because yeah uh, but prior to then i'd been using spread betting mm -hmm. um and so i got a new broker that accepted orders from multi charts yeah. and I pretty much um started trading all automated straight away. I was I probably I remember putting two or three strategies into practice that I probably shouldn't have done. Um, a few months later. They <laughs> they they weren't losing money but they weren't making any money. They were kind of break even strategies and yeah, just my early yeah. lack of knowledge. Just wanting to get on with it, kind of. Get your, oh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Really, really keen. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's how the process went. Really, I pretty much dropped what I'd been doing on the daily charts. Yeah. I'd uh, got myself developed a few strategies, uh, implemented them, and went live. And back then, I was my broker was Oanda. Yeah, yeah. And 
Oanda allow you to trade micro lots. So yes. micro lots on Forex, uh, let's work this out. You can be trading from, let's say, you trade a euro dollar, probably 10 cents a point, it would be, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, I think a micro lot is, it would be 10 cents a, a pip. Yeah. So really, really small trades. So yeah. I've, I've implemented a load of these strategies with. You know, next to nothing. I probably started with a, a five grand account, probably. Yeah, just testing and, the water. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just been slow progression, really. You know, the the accounts increased, and the the amount of strategies has slowly increased. And some of us, some of like I said, I pulled out two or three, yeah. and I've included more and more as as time goes on and developments develop <laughs> yeah for sure and so you I mean obviously the the strategies themselves as we've touched on I think we'll go back mm. to because there's quite a bit there that I'd like to chat about but the strategies themselves effectively are automated um, yeah you've back tested them so they're not just something you know they're not a random selection of rules they're something that you've picked tested you know uh, optimized and I know that word necessarily isn't isn't perfect for this type of setting but it's kind of I think that probably mm. resonates best with people if that makes sense yeah you know you know it's, it's completely it's completely valid it, it's something uh, I go through a lot of optimizations throughout yeah. the process of developing just one strategy yeah um, although there's there's a big difference between optimizing and over optimizing yeah there's, that was quite there's what optimizing I was thinking, yeah. yeah there's optimizing the right way and yeah. I feel very lucky that I have to come across Andrea Unger's course, and he's he taught me the the way to correctly use optimizations. Yeah, not um, just so many people, to the charts. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, so many people will misuse, and unfortunately, the software almost encourage encourages misuse and the wrong way to optimize it because it is so easy to optimize a whole bunch of of inputs or variables and yeah. come up with something that's completely over optimized and curve fitted and will never make money going forward yeah so these these uh, steps and the overarching sort of approach to your trading like you said started with a five grand account you mentioned the the risk management all of those rules are you uh, as rigid with those you know the kind of the the business plan side of the of your trading almost as oh, you are okay. with the strategy. Do you mean? Do you see what I mean? The strategy uh, yeah, apply. I, I do. Yeah. Um, apart from the actual account size. Yeah. Um, everything's very rigid. So position sizing is very rigid <clears throat> for each strategy. Each strategy is ever so slightly different. Yeah. Um, but it's all very rigid. Yeah. It's all quantifiable. Um, so the, yeah, the only thing. Um, I'm not rigid on is the actual account size. You know, over over the period of three years that I've been trading this yeah. automated way, um, I've been adding money to the account while it's been growing, uh, and that's. Oh, I see. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, yeah. I have discretionary effect. Yeah. Yes, I haven't got a, a plan that says, okay, right, I'm doing quite well now. At the end of 2019, I'm going to add another. Five thousand pounds to the account. I haven't got a plan like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it, almost um, but everything else, you have, sort of effectively a rule book for. Yes. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all it's all in the code, really. So. Yeah. Okay. Good point. Yeah. I have, obviously, the strategies, um, individual strategies, all have the rules, yeah. and then each individual strategy has, um, position sizing for it, which is individual to the strategy yeah and the only thing that isn't that again is is probably discretionary that isn't uh programmed is what strategies that i'm trading i trade a bunch of them um but i'm i'm mindful and this is a discretionary thing i am mindful of of the strategies i'm trading for example i wouldn't go and develop eight trend following strategies uh, on euro dollar and trade them all together because yes. it's okay. too highly correlated yeah so i am very mindful on portfolio correlation yeah. does that make sense yeah yeah for sure yeah and but that's not a rule you don't have a set set rule for that that's just something that you keep an eye on yourself effectively yeah it, it's yeah. something i keep an eye on but i could have a set rule and i possibly could benefit from having more rigid portfolio 
analysis mm. rules, but uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's interesting uh, yeah. because if if you're drawn to rules, uh, sort of, in a, you know, to an infinite level, developing more rules, adding rules, adding layers of rules, um, you know, can be what you're crying out for almost. But actually, if what you were looking for isn't necessarily that, and and that's still within your trading system, and there's nothing, you know, there's nothing to say either is right or wrong. Then that maybe that discretionary aspect is the part that you enjoy, maybe of your trading. I don't know. Do you, do you see what I mean? Yeah, I wouldn't say I enjoy it. I would say that I, and I wouldn't. <laughs> it's wrong to say that I ignore it, but <laughs> I, I probably don't spend as much time on it as possible. It's yeah. look. It's hard enough to come up with um, a working trading strategy as yeah. it is. Uh, so. If I spend a lot of time looking for a strategy on um, cable, on, on pound, dollar, for example, yeah, yeah. and um, don't really know what I'm trying to say here, but it's, it's difficult to find these strategies. If I was, if I could come up with ten strategies all on the same market that work really, really well, then. Yeah then it might be a problem but oh, i see what you're saying yeah yeah so it, you... it's yeah it's really quite hard to develop these strategies that do work well yeah so so it's almost a problem you know it would be a nice problem to have sort of scenario yeah that's right yeah <laughs> exactly that yeah, yeah okay it would, it would be you know, it would be a nice problem to have you know but a pick of 100 strategies that all work really really well then i'd have to think about how do i go about selecting the ones that i do actually trade yeah yeah. Yeah. No. Fantastic. I, I'm glad we've touched on that because that kind of leads in relatively nicely to um, sort of this this type of approach because I can remember one of the problems I had when I had this type of approach, and this probably shows why I wasn't necessarily that suited to it. Was my initial thinking was along the lines of, and this shows the the type of trader I was in the early days, and you know, how much I had to grow to be capable of trading. But I had this shiny penny kind of feel that if I could make one of these automated systems work, what I could potentially do is just up all values, you know, mm. up the percentage risk and everything else, because I had a known um, uh, sort of back-tested downside, drawdown, um, whatever mm. you want to call it. And I was just like, okay, well, exactly. you know, why couldn't I just put this up from, from a half a percent of my account or 0.25% of my account? Because that was, you know, that was how seriously I took it. I didn't put too much money into, into it. I wasn't taking it that seriously, but I had this, this almost, I guess it's greediness in reality that when I cracked the code, um, I would just suddenly put it up to maybe 5%. <laughs> and you saw, you can see how I was back yeah. in those days. And well, it why, makes sense yeah. what you say. It, it, won't, it probably wouldn't work, but it makes no, sense. No, absolutely. But and can, could you, knowing that you've got you know, a long way through this now and, and mm. you know, you, you're very much, you know, you're much, much further along with this type of approach than I ever even touched on to, could you explain some of the pitfalls in that type of thinking? Because, I, I, you know, although I probably was a little bit, you know, naive. I don't think I'm unique from that thinking. I think plenty of people think, well, I've got my visible drain side and it's 15%. So if I mm. put it up to 3% risk, then I'm only risking 45% and I can handle Do you know what yeah. I mean? That type of thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So from what I gather, the guys like, let's say, um, Larry Williams, for example. Yeah. When he trades uh, in the, the World Cup trading championship. Yeah. Now, Obviously, I can't speak for him, but I assume he does take some of these mechanical strategies and do just that. Now, yeah, okay. when, you're, when you're trading in competition environment, you're taking massive excessive risk. Yeah, um, kind of the only way, the expen I guess. Yeah, at the expense of you quite possibly could lose your whole account here. Yeah. Um, but it's, they're in a competition. And yeah. they, they'll be the first to tell you that they would never, ever go anywhere near that sort of risk in their own accounts yeah um, so in effect it does actually it does actually work um, yeah. immediately the biggest pitfall that you've got with that uh, the way I see it and this is quite interesting because this is another ever so slightly discretionary side of my trading yeah. is so trading systems or trading strategies each individual strategy um, they do stop working uh, yeah, I've got, I've still got some that I've developed 
literally within weeks of taking the course and they're still performing well today which i'm really pleased about yeah. but they do stop working because typically a training strategy will an exploit an edge um, or a behavior of a certain market and markets can change over yeah. time yeah. But, you know, they can fundamentally change yeah uh, things Different like drivers for sure yeah exactly and one of the real keys to mechanical trading is knowing when your strategy is not working anymore because there's a there's a point between if the strategy is the strategy in just a normal drawdown period or has it actually stopped working and if you're going to carry on trading that strategy and mm-hmm. it has stopped working you're going to lose money yeah so what you need to know is at what stage are you going to stop trading each individual strategy at what point is it to say actually no i think this strategy is not working anymore and it's never going to continue working so yeah. i'm always on the ball every i do it on a monthly basis i analyze each and every strategy to see are the results still in line with the the part the prior 10 years um yeah is it still working and the, i do have a rule for that i i do have a rule um it goes by the maximum historic drawdown i, I trade a percentage of that if the drawdown in the future um gets greater than a percentage of the the maximum historic drawdown then that's my cutoff point to say yeah no i've got to stop trading that now yeah um and that's i suppose i do have a rule for it but that it could be slightly slightly discretionary i suppose yeah you're involved um, with it i guess so is what you're saying yeah yeah, yeah yeah and that's and that's a big pitfall of a mechanical strategy you never know whether a and it, it's, it's probably the, exactly the same as a discretionary strategy. You, a discretionary trader could be trading for nine months, um, trading three times a day for nine months, and it'd be working great. And then it could suddenly, their method could suddenly stop working. It's, yeah. It's not just limited to automated systems. Not at all. It's just the only reason I think people talk about it more in automated is because, because you're disconnected from the trading process. Um, you know, if if uh, you know an approach or a strategy that I was using stopped working, potentially I would know about it. You know, if it, certainly if I was in tune with the with the markets and in tune with the approach I was using, you in theory you would know about it very early on. Um, a lot of the discretionary approaches that I've come across, the people that trade with a discretionary approach to trading, I should say, do so in a way that aligns with their logic. If that makes sense, so they yeah. their trades are what they would suggest is the next logical outcome to happen within the markets, and so when the market stops being logical or conditions change or whatever else, a discretionary trader would probably sort of use their discretion earlier because it would you know they'd be part of the process. Um, so I think that's the only reason it's ever spoken about, you know, in, in this standpoint. But it's it's an important point because it's all part of this understanding automated or, or systems based trading, isn't it? Yeah, and, and of course, um, you it's very very obvious on you look at an equity chart of a strategy. Yeah. It's yeah. much more obvious on an equity chart. It's very yeah. easy to bring up a chart of a, a mechanical strategy. Uh, much easier than bringing up a chart of somebody's discretionary yep. approach isn't it so mm. oh for sure it's very obvious that oh look at that, that that's um totally stopped working there yeah no good point yeah it's um, there, but, there's pros and cons of all of it and it, you have to say it's down to the person right i mean that's i think mm. that's probably the fairest way to put it yeah I, I, and i think so and then getting back to uh, when i first found mechanical strategies um you, you say when you uh, when you started looking into them and you didn't take them all that seriously mm. for me when i found them it was like a light bulb moment it's like this yeah. this is me this yeah. is 100 percent. this is me yeah so uh, and that's just difference in in personalities yeah for sure and and these days um your time spent um obviously is, is i guess your time spent trading in effect is time spent back testing then is that right yes that's, that's right kind yeah. of your, your biggest draw of time yeah, so my my trading life, if you like, <laughs> yeah. um, on a, on a daily basis, I I run my trading platform on 
a virtual private server. Yes. Uh, because my software has to be connected uh, all the time the markets are open, I say 24 hours a day, but that's only because I trade 24 hour markets. Yeah. Um, and I run the software on a server, a cloud based server. Mm -hmm. So, depending on what I'm doing, whether I'm in front of the computer during the day or not, but at minimum, I'll check the server morning and night just to make sure that there's no, nothing's gone wrong. There's no disconnections, there's yeah. nothing, well, just, you know, you need to keep an eye on what, what your account's doing. Yeah, for sure, um, yeah. But, yeah, apart from uh, if and when there was any disconnections or technical glitches uh i'm pleased to say that there's very very few over the years mm -hmm. um and you know they haven't been horrible they haven't been like i've lost all my money it's literally <laughs> a case of um the data feeds come become disconnected and yeah you know it hasn't had a data feed for a few hours so just reconnect data feed and hopefully you haven't missed a trade yeah it, it, it's that it's that trivial yeah, yeah. Um, Okay, hi Jared. Uh, welcome back. Um, <laughs> we'll try and pick up where we left off. Thanks, Luke. Yeah, thanks for having me back. No back, problem. Yeah. No problem. Um, so we sort of we touched on a little bit of daily routine. Um, the 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 bigger picture that we sort of started on was the the overall system of where you spent your time trading. What what's it like, kind of month to month? Because I have my own, you know. A more longer term habits that I check in with you know I, I do I do sort of make sure I'm following my rules I do make sure that my, my business plan is in check with the, you know the way that I'm trading how does that work from yourself because obviously you've, you've got a completely different standpoint yeah so month to month is I do on a monthly basis look at each and individual strategy that yep. that's in play uh, I think I mentioned this earlier but yeah I do monitor the performance individually as well as as a portfolio but yeah. as on a monthly basis I do individually look at the performance of each strategy and say whether or not I'm going to carry on trading that strategy mm -hmm. and um, up until now in three years in um, in fact right at the start within about two months I realized that I'd rushed a few strategies and I stopped trading them um, right. from that point onwards touch wood I've never had to stop trading a strategy because okay. they have they've carried on performing yeah um, that's a good sign I, isn't it really it's it's a really pleasing sign yeah, yeah I do although I will say I do have one that's very borderline at the moment so okay. I have to just keep my eye on that but the yeah. idea is you're trading a portfolio of strategies and yeah. if one stops you know starts going sideways or even starts losing a little bit of money before you manage to turn it off it won't have a big impact on your overall profits your overall portfolio mm. in, a, in a funny sort of way it's like having a portfolio of stocks for example i mean it is yeah you'd have you potentially have greater drawdowns or, or more issues with a stock because obviously it's not something you've back tested in the same way but it's it's very similar actually isn't it in terms of management it is yeah. it is similar although yeah. Uh, yeah, very different in others. Like <laughs> the, the idea and the beauty of having different strategies across different markets uh, is diver diversification. So yes. as long as you, your strategies aren't highly correlated, then yeah. um, unlike a basket full of stocks where if yeah. the overall market takes a hit, then they all could drop a bit. Um, yeah, hopefully, for sure. Yeah, the idea with with different strategies across different markets. It's not, not quite so correlated. It doesn't mm. quite move together. That that's reminded me actually. Have you read um, Ray Dalio's book? Uh, is it Principles? I think it's called. Principles. I haven't. No. I so haven't. he's a trader, probably more similar to your approach to trading than my okay. approach. Um, you know, very much systematic, systematized trading, and it, that's what you've just said rings very true with his book. It, you know, it, it's very much um, about being uncorrelated. You know, in, from a risk perspective. Yeah. Um, although you could be within correlated markets, it's having an uncorrelated, uncorrelated risk, um, which is yeah. exactly what you've described effectively, isn't it? Yeah, and the and the beauty of it is, and um, with let's say you trade three different strategies, um, and as long as they're not highly correlated, um, mm. let's say each strategy 
makes you ten thousand dollars a year just for example yeah um the more strategies you add into your portfolio uh, the more net profit you're going to have but the drawdowns actually get reduced um so yeah. it, it kind of works good point it works really well it reduces yeah. overall drawdown um, yeah again it as long as they're um, not too highly correlated yeah and they're getting drawdowns at the same time but that actually leads on very, very nicely into my next thought and next question, really, in the, 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 the monthly view. Do you include in that like a, a sort of a macro view, um, a bit like I was discussing in, a last, in my last podcast with um, Javed Anand? And if so, does that mean that you could at times have, you know, a selection of trend following strategies or running or, you know, swing trading or does that make sense? Um, Yes. Yeah, um, right. I, yeah, I don't tend to look at a macro view. I yeah. tend to be quite, I tend to have quite tunnel vision with Keeps looking you out at, of it, I guess. I like to stay out of it. Yeah. yeah. I like to yeah. look at what my strategies are doing. And hopefully if I've developed them the way I should do, mm. then they're robust enough to continue working through all types of markets, whether it's going you know, volatile or it's going down, up. So I tend not to look at the macro view. I don't ever look at news. Um, yeah. I try not to get too involved with that. I just yeah. do what I need to be doing. In it's order not within to... the back test, so it doesn't have any relevance, isn't it, I guess? Exactly. Well, everything's everything's included within the back test. Sorry, so... yeah, yeah. As in you, um, you, haven't, you haven't allowed for news, effectively. No, saying, yeah. no. I mean, yeah, obviously the news has happened, but it's reflected in the prices, yeah. which are within the back test. Yeah. So, yeah, that that's... That's yeah. another reason why I really like mechanical type strategies because I don't like to get involved in the fundamentals, the news, all yeah. that sort of that sort of thing. Before we go into that, then the mm. the types of strategies that you build, then when you build them, do you deliberately, if you were, you know, if you were to come up with a new strategy today, would you deliberately build it with the mindset of what you've got as an existing portfolio of strategies, you know, to ensure that it wouldn't overlap? Yes, just, I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, it's typically um, I'll have a, a base of maybe half a dozen different types of strategy, like yeah. uh, I mean, a version, a trend following, um, yeah. a a breakout, um, yeah. a gap strategy, yeah. and I'll go through each forex pair um, and uh, the major forex pairs, and I will test each strategy on each market and um typically just you'll, you'll find the stuff that works has tend to be quite uncorrelated uh, so yeah mm -hmm. getting, getting back to your question yeah, yeah i don't uh, if i've got lots of trend following strategies all on the dollar then yeah i wouldn't put them all into play and i'd look for i'd look for maybe some mean reversion stuff as well yeah but you'd be comfortable, you know, for example, if you find a group of trend following strategies that were working uh, in different markets, you know, slightly different strategies across different metrics, you'd be comfortable with them all running at a similar time. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Oh, that's interesting. Mm. It's, 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 uh, you know, it, from my end, because all these things are so sort of, um, what's the sort of the best way to put it? Almost mentally taxing. You know, if I was to say today, I'm not going to trend follow, I'm going to, you know, take a completely, you know, scalp, for example. Yeah. The time it would take me to get to be able to do that, um, mm. you know, mean reversion approach, whatever type of approach I was using, you know, just, just to change my approach because I'm so heavily involved in it by comparison to what we're talking about. It's, yeah. it's really interesting to understand how it works when you're not part of it. And actually what it gives you again, like we've said, is, is that level of flexibility. Mm, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd, I'd just like to, yeah, I like to stay out of it. Yeah. Again, like, like I mentioned it, I help, I think it, it helps reduce some of your emotion within the markets as well. Yeah. Well, that was that again. You've you've led me perfectly into what kind of the next point I was looking at as well. So when you when you used to trade, um, sort of you were involved in in your trading before it got completely mechanical um, and automated. Probably is the best way to describe it now. Um, mm. Did you ever experience sort of um, you know the the likes of the the poker players tilt where you, where it's just you know you're emotionally trading things aren't going right. You're not following a strategy or do, do, does that make sense? Did that did that happen? Yeah. Um... I think because I was trading off the daily charts, yeah. um, it wasn't 
It's quite slow, quite, I guess, by comparison. It was quite slow, and you had yeah. a lot. You had a lot of time to think about what you were going to do the next day. Mm. And I typically would do what I thought was right. I, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't do anything to. You were drawn into something from a. I, I, there's no real great way of describing it, but kind of from an emotional standpoint, protecting no, a loss or something like that. I, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have said so. No, no. I, I never. I never done any. Um, you know, if, if a position was going against me, I would never move my stop loss further away. I was yeah. really happy to just take the small loss. Um, yeah. Because it had been instilled in me in some of the early books that I'd picked up. Yeah. Yeah, so that really stuck her, stuck in there, you know, from an early day. Even yeah. though, in reality, you know, these days that that's yes, you have to decide when to remove the the strategy in total. But actually, you know, the the day to day trading, you know, is not something that you have to worry about anymore. So so that's all right. of those issues that that arise, particularly as a young trader, um, just aren't there anymore. Just aren't apparent. Yeah. No, yeah. for sure. So you've got these strategies and things running, and and I think. By now, I, certainly I've got a good picture of how you put it all together and, and the ways and means you sort of make everything work sort of day to day, week to week, month to month. What's the what's the big picture with you for trading? What do you what you know? Where do you want to take it? Because you mentioned at the very beginning about not necessarily seeing yourself being a, a full time or professional trader. What how's that changed to today? Um, yeah, I mean, no, no huge goals you know end of the year goals or anything like that it's yeah. just getting a little bit better each month each year just getting better and better and yeah. just staying consistent returns like i've been producing but obviously we, we, all, we all want more mm -hmm. um just carry on producing my strategies the i know the technique the you know using automated trading that that is my thing so yeah. Yeah, just continuing doing what I'm doing and watching that equity curve just sort of continue to rise then basically and, and yeah, hopefully make right. it a steeper and steeper curve. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's right. the idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. It's sometimes when I talk to different traders, people wanna you know, they have a a, a goal in mind. Um and I uh, a few years ago I had one myself. I was very much fixed on um using a trading pot to uh, build a house. Um, uh -huh. It was quite. Some, it got quite um, built in almost. You know, I think it might have even mm. appeared within my trading plan. And I don't know whether it was positive or negative, but it actually changed. Um, you know, over time, life changed, things changed. Obviously, this now trading is you know a big, bigger chunk of my life than it was yeah. back then. And so you do have to adjust things. But I think you know we're probably all in the same boat to a degree where we just want to keep improving. You can't course, stand still yeah. as a trader. I don't think can you. No, you no. Um, you know that as well as anybody because you've got your portfolio of strategies that you said you know all along they could end up not working any day. Almost, exactly. I guess. Yeah. So I'm I'm constantly uh, thinking about developing new strategies and when I develop maybe this is something that I need to talk about as well. When I develop a strategy, mm. um, I, we could we could talk about a whole podcast about strategy development. Yeah. Sure. Sure. When when I typically go through the development process and I've found something that I'm happy with, I won't just go and trade it straight away. So there's there's a period of a minimum of, sort of three months where I will put that strategy on hold. I'll actually I'll have it running on the software, but I won't have it trading live. So okay. I can then monitor its performance using true forward. Uh, out of sample data um, yeah. just to make sure that it it really is working how I want it before I can trade it so there's always that if I go and develop a really good strategy tomorrow I'm, I'm most likely not going to trade it for three four months time yeah, yeah. so yeah always always thinking I need to develop more and more and more so yeah but the, be the beauty of it is I can spend as much or as little time developing strategies as and when as and when I want you know it's not like a, a nine yeah, to five job that, there's actually no time constraint at all is there I guess there other than no. you know if you ran out of strategies which you're probably not going to do no um, and then you just think of think yeah. of new ideas I'm constantly thinking of yeah. new ideas I can be in the car and suddenly a strategy <laughs> idea comes comes to mind yeah one of, one of my favorite things to do is uh look at 
uh, stuff online of you know strategy ideas online yeah. and take them and actually code them and test them because yeah um 90% of the time they don't work and it's not not only does it kind of reinforce uh that I'm on the right track doing what I'm doing but it's just really enjoyable to yeah <laughs> to to code these strategies and see yeah see what how they work yeah yeah no I can imagine because it opens up a, a potential you know a whole load of options it mm. um, it makes me think a bit of the you know the total traders um, yes of, of all yeah. that sort of the story the various characters and things within those stories in the books and things that people have read yeah um, yeah because that that is you know I I actually did do that at one stage was I I did effectively back test the turtle trader strategy um, oh yeah it was probably out of Michael Coble's book. Um, and which uh, which markets did you test just out of interest? I can't remember. It would have been FX, um, and okay. I probably would have done just sort of the majors well, before I yeah. before I joined, joined Dynamic Trader. I basic uh, basically only traded the majors, yeah. um, so dollar crosses basically. Yeah. Um, five markets, uh, and oh, again I was doing that discretionary, but I was testing all sorts of different things. Um, yeah. I was hunting. I was still in shiny penny syndrome. Um, and <laughs> and um, the turtle traders system did it um, produce horrible results? Did it lose money? I rem- I remember it working okay on did something it? like um, dollar yen. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, dollar yen's very very trendy. Very, it's very yeah. good for trend following. Yeah. I, so I remember doing right something there. there, yeah, and and I I don't think I ever ran it with an account, but I might have put a demo account on it, um, yeah. and just played around. But yeah, I remember it, it doing horribly in certain markets. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I can remember reading on forums that people used to say that um, Aussie Kiwi um, is mm. a you know is a trendy market or is a good market okay. for something or other. I, I just remember it stuck in my mind at the time, and I remember mm. back testing something like that. Or, mm. or or I back tested something. This is how you know. This is how I was playing around with things, and it just yeah. did horribly. And mm. and you could tell, just like you said, when you pick up something from, uh, you know, a forum or from somewhere else, that ability to run through it yourself mm. is the game changer in in sort of your mindset almost, isn't it? Because if you yeah, pick that up so, and just yeah. decided to trade it, which yeah, plenty and of people uh, do. Yeah, I, I find it really enjoyable actually. Co- <laughs> this is a bit geeky i suppose but i just find it really enjoyable uh, developing the code to yeah. to run the test and yeah. um i must add now for any of your listeners that are interested in getting into automated and coding yeah i don't come from any sort of a, a coding or programming background whatsoever right um so it's you don't just, be too don't be too put off by it yeah you you could learn it without the you know without the oh yeah i happen to also be you know into yes. Coding or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Well, that that being said, I use multi charts um, yeah. similar to TradeStation. It uses a language called Power Language or Easy Language Tra- TradeStation's version, yeah. and it's it's a programming language developed for traders. It's not just a generic okay. uh, programming language. It's not like Python or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. So, so it kind of makes some sense. It, yeah, eye. and yeah, it has yeah. a lot of built-in functions. It just makes the traders' life easier. Um, yeah, it's for it's for traders who want to trade. It's not for yeah uh, programmers who want to trade. So yeah, um, yeah. Ha- having having said that, if if any of your listeners want to try Python, then maybe that would be a little bit more difficult. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think that's the, that's the thing. I've looked at it, um, just out of interest, you know, as you as you do, looked at the various different. Um, bits and pieces over the years, and I remember seeing Python code mm. and thinking, "Yeah, no, this is not the day for that. I, need, I don't need to start this now at seven o'clock on a Tuesday evening." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I should look at um, I should look at TradeStation and MultiCharts just to um, just yeah. to see how much I understand. Just you know, just for it, interest's sake. Yeah, it it um, you just soon pick it up. Yeah, uh, the most popular one, obviously, is MT4, is MetaTrader. Yeah, um, yeah. It's probably popular because it's free with most yeah most sure. brokers offer it for free mm-hmm. um but i don't know too much about it myself i've never actually coded from scratch but i right. believe it's much more difficult than the likes of trade station or multi charts yeah i think what i had was a like a pre-made um like the bones of a strategy 
Okay. Uh, you could then adjust um, Bollinger Bands or uh, you know yeah. Donchian channels yeah. or whatever else in. I can't yeah. remember what it was, but but yeah, I was doing it in MT4. Okay. Um, and I actually, when you think about that approach, having your hands tied to that degree, um, where you've just got a set of parameters that you can only adjust the metrics mm. on, is mm. not not a particularly healthy way, I think, to trade. In no, the, you'll end up over optimizing. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that and that yeah, that describes it perfectly. Yeah. Um, so the again moving on, um, we've we've sort of gone through a lot of bits and pieces there, and I know now where you've got to, you know, you, you're it's 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 working for you. You you know you're happy with your results. You can see it's working. You can see that people could benefit from it. So you, you mentioned to me um, previously that you that you do you know as and when if it's if a if a situation arises you would coach certain people and, and you've helped a few traders sort of make the step into into the coding with multi charts presumably yes um i do work with i'm fairly select with the people i work with yeah i can um, imagine it's, they, it's the right way yeah well we've we've both got to get something out of it yeah. um i've got to be able to know that i can really help this particular person out and yeah. they obviously <laughs> need to be know that no, need to know that they can be helped out by me and mm. because i'm an automated trader i guess it's quite a niche subject within trading isn't it it's yeah yeah we sort of said before it's it's less popular isn't it yeah yeah so yes i do uh is the uh the long answer so yeah i do help a few people out i've developed um i've got a course that i i, I sell that's for sale uh, through my website that's helped out quite a few people i, I have a free a few free courses as well yeah alongside those so and did you put them together and find that they've they've also helped you i mean you mentioned sort of being a, a give and take relationship and and i've you know i've helped people uh, start to trade I, i've not taught anybody to trade mm. yeah. you know from beginning to, to successful sort of thing but i've helped people make certain steps and and i find it immensely um sort of helpful in my own trading trading not just satisfying to see somebody improve but actually it can really help your own trading sometimes have you um, found that at all or not? <laughs> I don't disagree with you, but I'd say probably no. Okay. Uh, I think I'm. Might be the difference in approach again then. Yeah, I think so. I think maybe I'm so. I don't want to say confident because that sounds that sounds. No, but I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm very comfortable mm -hmm. um, with my situation and my knowledge with mechanical trading and automated trading that. The the core, especially the courses, the course that I developed, it's probably aimed slightly more at beginners. Yeah. Uh, so it's slightly more basic, basic stuff there. But uh, the course in particular that I developed was it was I made it for it was something that I wish I had. It was something that probably would have saved five years of my trading career. Right. Uh, so that's that was the the idea behind it. So yeah. oh, you know, a lot of it was actually kind of remembering back how how I felt, what my struggles were at that time, yeah. uh, and then creating some solutions to that, and yeah. creating the course modules around those those solutions. Fantastic, and we'll we'll put it in the in the notes of the the show so that people can find it. But but just so that you know, people if they're looking now, what um, what's the name of your website and where you know where sure. do you need to go? Yeah, the website is um, www.thetransparenttrader.com. Good name. I like that. I think there's an awful lot of smoke and mirrors um, within oh, trading. There so, is. Uh, there is. So, good, um, good name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I just want to add something that I've found. Yeah, please do. I found recently, it's now it's, it's no fault of any traders, but you've probably found this as well through talking to many beginner traders yeah unfortunately the traders that often need the most help are the are the beginners mm. and they're often the ones that don't realize that they need help trading is very easy to get started in isn't it it's yeah. there's very very low barriers to entry yeah and within 10 minutes you can be in the euro dollar yeah, way over exactly. leverage with no idea what's going to happen next yeah exactly yeah. and i found a lot of beginner traders they they really don't realize that they could really do with some help early yeah. on yeah but because 
anybody can put on a winning trade, literally anybody can mm-hmm. put on, um, then I don't know, it kind of leads you into a bit of full sense of security. So yeah. I find that the people who I, who I work with or want to work with me are those people, are those traders who, unfortunately, many traders come into it because they think that they're going to make a load of money really quickly. They don't realize yeah. how extremely difficult it is. Mm-hmm. And they talk about how such a large percentage of tr- beginner traders fail, don't they? Yeah. Um, so I found that the people that need or make most use of my help are the people who are not in it just to get rich quick or make a bit of money. They're in it because they love trading. Yeah. They've tried on their own. They've struggled. They yeah. hopefully they haven't lost too much money. Yeah. And then they've gone that sort of full circle and thought, actually, this is really hard. I could now do with some help. Um, yeah. And they're they're the, they're the types of traders that I like to work with. Yeah, yeah. No, I can I completely agree with that. The, the I, I, there's a few things there. I think the eighty percent or whatever it is, ninety percent of traders that that mm. lose with you know with those those statistics you hear. Um, yeah. I think there's a few things in that. In that it just goes to show how many accounts are far too small, probably, and then blown, but also yeah. just blown up by you know purely not knowing and that doesn't necessarily mean that a trade is failing um, it just means that that account's failed so you've got to bear that in mind for one and mm. this isn't me discrediting the figures but I'm just saying for people out there that think this is you know nearly impossible it's not but it is incredibly hard to uh, get there you know just from putting in a couple of hundred quid into an account and, and you know and thinking that that's going to do it um, yeah. and the second point is I can't remember where I think I was reading to it reading it or, or listening to it I'm not sure um, and it was a um, a person talking about trading and how when you enter a uh, a trade or you open an, a, a spread betting account or whatever else the, the, you know that first day it's like stepping on to a Premier League game having never played football you know there, there's mm. such high level traders within the same room you were in the same space as you it's not the perfect analogy but i do think it does bring some sort of sense of relativity to a person that's just starting out as trading that you should be aware it's like i say it's far from perfect as analogies go but you should be aware that you know if you're a beginner expect somebody to take something from you that knows more um, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. You, yeah. <laughs> you've, you've hit the nail on the head. Yeah, yeah. and you've got to, you've, I don't think you necessarily need to pay in accounts for education, but I do think there is a cost of learning. And, um, mm. and that could be not, you know, not paid to the broker or to, you know, it, into an account and lost in a trading account. It could be paid to an education or, or, you know, to somebody like yourself learning to trade. But you do, I think, by the very nature of trading, bearing in mind it's for financial gain, have to pay in some way. To um, to build that level of education initially, I think anybody that's done it completely for free has either you know struck very lucky, found somebody that's willing to help them, or just done very very well. And it, and I would question again, without being too negative or skeptical, how long that would last. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think that's that's yeah. from experience rather than you know a sort of straight straight sort of opinion, if you see what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, trading is a profession and yeah. it is very hard, and yeah. you are almost going up against other traders you, you've got you've got to be better than those yeah. to, to to win the money at the end yeah. of the day almost yeah so exactly what yeah. you know what makes you think that that after a month two months six months even a year you know you're going to be better than these people that have been doing it far far longer than than yourselves yeah um you especially with no education yeah for sure and you said uh, before we spoke, you very kindly put together um, a document to help people sort of make the first steps. Is that right? It, with uh, within you know, their trading process through your uh, your um, excuse me through your transparent trader website. Um, so I can include a link to that as well. But could you just sort of outline a little bit of that, maybe just to draw a few people's eyes towards it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean it's it's fairly specific. It's yeah. specific for people who want to get involved with automated trading, yeah. like exactly like I do. It's mm-hmm. I've put together. It's just a guide, and the nice thing about it is it's fairly basic. It's step by step what you need to do to have like this hands off approach to and create strategies. Have them in software, automated. And I suppose 
trading like a robot as i don't really like that term but no i know what you're saying that's, yeah that's essentially what it is but take the human element um, out of it yeah, yeah this and i put this together it's exactly what i do it's what i've been doing for the last three years so mm. it, it's not fiction it's real life yeah I'll, I'll tell you exactly what software i use what accounts i can use or Fantastic. what you can use yeah. and the process and the steps to it um, so if anyone's because it is a bit of a minefield if you google yeah. automated trading then once you've got past all the brokers and all the all the google ads and all that you're you're still gonna have a lot of confusion so yeah i can think of a few um borderline scams that uh, that come to mind if you type that into google pretty much straight away okay. Uh, okay. so uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. it's great to have that and I, I thank you very much for that jared yeah so I, that's, I hope people will have a look at it it's exactly what i do yeah how i'm doing it Fantastic. and if you wanted to replicate what i do this is this is how you go about mm. it and yeah, you can find that on the on the website um, i hope i do hope that there'll be people out there that have a look because for my mind if you've traded for a period of time and maybe not made any money um or you've had that lucky break at the beginning and then it's sort of gone down from there and realizing that you actually know not very much and that the the process that we've discussed and all the you know all the ways and means that you trade as we've gone through in the, over the last hour if that you know if that sort of draws people towards thinking actually you know that you know of all the of all the podcasts and bits and pieces i've listened to this resonates with the most i think mm. what you've outlined is um is a great starting point i think um uh, you know it's sparked yeah. i think it's potentially sparked interest because we haven't yeah. gone like you said we haven't gone into the system development we haven't gone into um any of the sort of finer details of it i know a little bit um, and maybe my ignorance is whether why I haven't necessarily stepped down that path today. But um, and maybe that's something we could talk about, you know, in the future on another podcast. Um, and um, and yeah, no, I, I think it's fantastic. So I appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's it's just something like I say, if if it's something that interests you, it's yeah. it's another way of trading, automated mechanical trading. Yep. Um, you might have been. Try, you might have been like I was in the in the first place trading off a of daily charts yep. and you know you, it's 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 great for people who've got full time jobs as well I'm, I, I forget that um, because yeah good point yeah you you can access the market uh, you can do many more trades throughout the day um, without having to be there but yeah. if if you're really interested in actually doing automated trading then it's it might be worth a look it shows you yeah. how i'm doing it yeah and brilliant. gives you obviously it's not the only way there's it, i i tell you what software i use but there's many different softwares to choose from so. yeah well, well we'll include the link in the in the show notes and um and anybody can grab it from there or you can give me a shout um on the website or wherever else on the facebook page and, yeah and yeah it's just uh, the address is um the transparent trader forward slash luke great um so, and yeah brilliant um, well i won't forget that one <laughs> yeah, so you can get your get your free automated trading guide. There. Fantastic. And let's sort of let's work towards wrapping up now because I've taken up quite a lot of your time. And and uh, as we mentioned, this is the this is the second part of it. Um, the we've we've discussed a few books um there's yeah. ways uh, already as as obviously we've just spent a few minutes talking about where to start but is there a book that you would recommend as well sort of first step you've recommended a few along the way but i wonder if there's one that really stands out if anybody's looking for a reading list okay yeah i've i've noted some down actually Brilliant. um i think in terms of if you're into automated or systematic trading um then I have three that I can recommend you. So anything Great. Um, by Larry Williams, um, uh, which is I always get these ones mixed up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Long term secrets to short term trading. That's the best one from Larry. I, okay. I, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, another one, which is I've already mentioned, short term trading strategies that work by Larry Connors and Cesar Alvarez. Yes. Um, the third technical one is Building wi Winning Algorithmic Trading Systems by Kevin Davey. Um, so they're the three technical ones. They're fairly specific to mechanical or automated trading. Yeah. Um, but I have actually noted down another book, which is 
it's more it's more of a fiction book. It's have you heard of of the story from Nicholas Darvis? No, I'm interested in this one. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's, the, the book's called How I Made $2 Million in the Stock Market. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Nicholas yeah. Nicholas yeah. Darvis. He, he was the guy who was a dancer traveling all around the world. Yeah. And I forget I forget exactly when it was. Now, it might have been in the 50s, perhaps. Uh, but he was trading using like a breakout trend-following approach to stocks, and he was using... Um, I think he called it the cable. It was like telegrams or or some, something along those lines. And right. it was just a really inspiring story. It's one I read. I've read multiple times now, but I read certainly early early on. Yeah, in, it keeps coming up. Life. People but, yeah. keep mentioning it to me, and I <laughs> I still haven't got around to it. I've been reading yeah. such diverse um, books just recently. I don't know as I've had a trading book just recently. I've been going through all sorts of bits and pieces. A lot of them um, Raphael has recommended, so okay. they can be different to say the least. Um, Power mm. versus Force is one that um, I've just finished. Um, oh. But um, but yeah, I'll look. It, I I need to look it up because too many people now have said. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a really yeah, it's a really good um it's a good read. Very yeah, in, inspirational. Yeah, brilliant. Great mm. stuff. Okay. Well let's let's sort of leave it there. Is there anything okay. that you wanted to mention that we haven't covered? You had in mind? Oh um I don't think so. We've covered offhand. a lot, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. It's been um, good. Yeah. Um advice to people. I would say make sure you've got an edge trade with an edge yeah um, if if those of you don't know what an edge is it simply means that after a large enough sample of trades I'm not talking after three or four trades but after 20 50 100 trades that your methodology as long as you stick to it then you're going to come out on top you're going to have a, a positive yeah. expectancy and simple but, that's, but couldn't be yeah, truer, that, that's sure. the most I, I hear these I hear something that irritates me so, slightly from <laughs> I suspect more beginner traders that they tend to say things like um, oh anything works you've just got to have the right trading psychology um, they 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 kind of jump on this trading psychology thing which yeah. it's important but I don't believe it's half as important as it's made out to be um, or maybe that's because I'm a particularly from your a, standpoint a mechanical trader. Yeah, 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 yeah but sure. but with regards to anything works as long as you've got the right trading psychology, I think that's utter rubbish because um, it's very very hard to find something that does work. So yeah. to, to find something that you have got an edge. So I would recommend to anyone find an edge, find a system, whether it's a discretionary system that you can kind of test somehow or whether it's a mechanical system like i use that you can back test but sure. find something that is proven to have an edge yeah um, that's the, that's the first thing to do yeah and then, very simple and very true yeah and keep things small when you're starting out uh in terms of trade size position sizing keep, yeah small as you can risk yeah. as little as you can yeah. while you're starting out yeah good advice that's where a lot of people lose lose accounts yeah yeah i'm sure it is yeah no fantastic okay well it's been it's been brilliant learning um about the way that you trade about mechanical trading about system side trading automated trading um you know all the different ways we can do all the different themes that we could have discussed and and given an overview of everything i do think that there's a lot there for people to grab hold of if they want to uh, reach out to you so all the links will be um will be in the notes and um yeah i would like to say until the next time jared uh, we can yeah. we can jump in again and, and maybe go a little bit deeper into the mechanical okay. side of things yeah so it's me no thanks for having me on luke fantastic it's been good okay great stuff okay i shall speak to you soon yeah thank you thanks see Dave. you later bye-bye Bye. thank you for listening to the show this episode and many more can be found at our website www.tradethesignal.com all info and resources from the show is found in the show notes, both at the website and on your podcast streaming app. For more information on Dynamic Trader, the education and community that transformed Luke's trading and many others, get in touch via the website.